The Ruminate feed editor lets you select which feeds appear in the diet ingredients drop down menu, lets you create mixes and edit individual feeds. Now you can get to the feed editor from the edit menu. Just choose the edit menu and edit feeds. And then up pops the feed editor. Now it's divided up into three sections. When you first come in, the tab is all to do with selecting which feeds appear on those drop down menus and managing your feed libraries. You've got a second tab which is all about creating mixes and the third tab is editing an individual feed and the actual parameters that make up that feed. So if we go back to selecting feeds, you can see here we've got um, the basic Ruminate library loaded at the moment. It's got a total of 153 feeds in the library. At the moment they're all selected and the library is in the Ruminate libraries folder on the drive. Now the first thing we recommend you do is go into the feed editor and turn off a lot of the feeds that you're never going to use on your farm. So for instance, for a local farm, we're never going to see almond hulls. Um, we don't feed brassicas. And just work your way down the list like this and turn off a lot of those, those feeds that you'll never see. To speed this process up, you can sort the feeds in various ways and you can turn on or off all the feeds just the feeds or just the mixes. So for instance, you can select all the feeds, deselect all the feeds and just turn on the ones that you're interested in and the same for feeds and mixes and sort them in various ways just to make that process a little bit easier. I'll just turn them all back on just for the sake of the example. The last set of functions on the select feeds window are to do with the feed library. Now, by default, most people will simply use the feed library that comes with Ruminate that lives in the Documents folder under Ruminate and in the Libraries folder, and it's called feedlibrary.db3. You can use multiple feed libraries with Ruminate, so you can create a new feed library in another location, and you can open a feed library that's been um, previously created. So this is useful for advisors or um, nutritionists, say, who are visiting a large number of farms and they may wish to keep a feed library for each individual farm so that they're not wading through thousands of feeds that are particular to those farms. But for most uh, Ruminate users, you'll never need to worry about this. One last option that you've got here is to um, import a Ruminate version 2 feed library. If you've got individual feeds that you've created in Ruminate version 2, come into here, click on the import button, choose the CSV file from the um, from the dialog box that opens and you can step through that library one at a time and, and um, import or skip the feeds. Now, for the, there's a lot more detail about feed libraries and importing old feed libraries in the user guide, so I recommend you go off and have a look at that um, before you start using those functions. Now let's have a look at how you'd add a new feed to the Ruminate library. You do that on the third tab, the Edit Feed Parameters section of the Feed Editor. And when you click on that, you can see down the left hand side here is a list of all the feeds in the feed library. Buttons in the centre controlling what you want to do with those feeds. And on the right hand side, all the information about a particular feed, which is currently ghosted out because um, we're not, we haven't chosen a feed to um, do anything to at the moment. You can select different feeds and you can see the values change as you move down the list. And once you've selected a feed, you can actually edit that particular feed. You can add a copy of it. You can add a new feed, which is com completely empty from scratch, or you can delete that feed from the library. Now we recommend that you don't delete any of the feeds that come with Ruminate. Keep those as essentially reference feeds to use to create for creating copies of them or to refer back to. If you're not interested in them and they, they'll never be on your farm, just turn them off in the Select Feeds tab so you don't see them in the drop down. But they may become useful later on as the basis of a new feed. Now as an example, we're going to create a new barley grain feed. So we've had a new load of barley come into the farm, we've had it feed tested. So we select barley grain in the, uh, the Ruminate feed list because this is the closest feed we have to the feed that we want to, uh, we, we've got information for and we want to create. And let's add a copy of that feed to the feed library. Now you can see that Ruminate has deactivated everything outside of the edit window. The edit window is now open and you can change these values, but everything else has been deactivated. You can't do anything. Even the close tool up in the top right hand corner up here is gone. 
because at the moment you're constrained to here and you must decide whether you're going to add this feed to the feed library or cancel out and um, lose everything you've done so far. So don't get trapped when the close control is gone. It just means that you're still editing a feed or a mix and you have to go back there and finish the job before you exit the feed editor. Okay, so we're adding a new batch of barley grain. I usually like to just give these a, um, a name. Now you can see as soon as I've deleted away the, the name copy in there, Ruminate's flag this is red. And that's telling me that um, this is not an acceptable entry. And it's telling me that in this case because there's already a feed called barley grain in the, the Ruminate library. So I can't have two feeds or mixes that have got the same name. So I've got to add something to this. Now I like to add a date. So let's add today's date. And now Ruminate's happy. It's um, gone back to being black. Now you can see here that some of the parameter names have got bo uh, in bold. These are the values that Ruminate needs as a minimum to create a new feed. So we've got to give it a feed management category. We've got to tell it what sort of proteins in the feed, something about its particle size, and then these seven parameters down here. That's the minimum you need to create a new feed. All the other values are nice to have and Ruminate will use them if you've got them, but they're not necessary to create a new feed. If you're unsure about what some of these parameters are, like everything in Ruminate, put your mouse pointer over the top of it and a tooltip window will appear and it'll give you more information. And you can see here a bit more information about crude protein and dry matter. Now we've got real feed test information for our batch of barley grain, so let's just go in and change those values. So it's not quite as good quality as the Ruminate library entry, so it's had a lower ME value, lower crude protein, higher dry matter value, and a higher NDF. Now once we've finished, we can click on cancel to leave the feed editor and and not add the, uh, this particular feed, or OK to add the feed, and that's what we want to do in this instance. Hit the OK button, and now you can see you've got a new entry in here for a new feed. And if we jump back to the select feeds, you can see it's been added to the list of all the feeds and mixes that are available in the drop-down list, and by default it's turned on, so it will appear in your um, ingredient drop-down list when you're creating a diet when you exit the feed editor and we've now got 154 feeds in our library. Editing an existing feed is as simple as selecting that feed, hitting the edit button, and you can change any of those parameters once you, once you change a value. You can now say OK and back out again. And if you want to delete a feed, select it in the feed list, Hit the delete button. Ruminate just wants you to confirm that you definitely want to delete this feed and say yes. And then that feed is removed from the list. That really covers everything you need to do with feeds. Um, you can add a new feed as a completely blank feed using the add new button. But as I said before, we really don't recommend you do that. Almost always use a copy of the closest feed from the Ruminate library and just change the parameters that you've got from your feed test to do that. The last thing you need to know about in the feed editor is creating mixes. Now that's in the second tab, create mixes, and you can see it looks very similar when you're editing individual feeds. Then the left hand side here is a list of all the feed, all the mixes I should say that are in the feed library. The same four buttons for editing a mix, adding a new mix, adding a copy of an existing mix and deleting mixes. And then there's the edit pane on the right hand side. And this is where you actually add the feeds to a mix and tell Ruminate what percentage by weight that each feed makes up in that mix. So let's add a copy of our demonstration mix. Click on the Add Copy button. The Edit pane becomes active. And as for, as for when we're editing an individual feed, everything outside of that Edit pane has been deactivated, including the Close Control up in the top right-hand corner of the window. So you've got to finish editing the mix before you can move back into Ruminate and continue using it. Now the Edit pane is broken up into three sections. Top center here is a list of all the feeds in the mix and the percentage by weight that they make up. Down the bottom is the name of the mix and a few other parameters that it makes sense to define these uh, particularly for your mix because things like costs, you'll have additional costs of putting a mix together, which is more than just the addition of the costs of the, um, the feeds that make it up. 
And then on the right hand side is all the feeds in the feed library that are not in the existing mix. Now, you can add feeds to a mix simply by double clicking on it. And you can see that barley silage uh, jumps straight across into the mix window. And you can get them out of the mix by double clicking on the row header. And they go straight back into the, uh, the window here the list here I should say. You can put in individual uh, feeds in one go by selecting the, the first feed, hold down the control key on your keyboard and select a few other feeds and then click on the, the button to add those feeds to the mix and they all go in. Let's get rid of those. Or you can add a block of feeds holding the shift key. So select the first one, Hold the shift key down on your keyboard, select the last feed you're interested in, in a consecutive block, and then add those to the mix. Those modifier keys, control and shift, work in exactly the same way as they work in any other Windows program. So just to show us how to finish off a mix, let's add some canola meal to our existing mix. And just for the sake of argument, we'll make that 5% of the weight of the mix. You can see here now that the total is adding up to 105% and we can't exit the mix editor because we haven't got a valid mix definition yet. And in brackets it's telling us what changes we have to make to make this add up to 100%. So we've got to take 5% out on one of the other feeds in the mix. So let's just remove the reduce the wheat grain down to 30%. Now the total of, of the mix is equal to 100% and the OK button has been activated. So to add that mix we simply click on OK and now we've got a copy of the demo mix ready to be used. And if we go back into the Select Feeds tab and go down to the mix we can see that there it is in our list already selected ready to go so you can choose it from the drop down lists on the main Ruminate window.